Move over, Kate Beckinsale and Mila Jovovich. It's Aaron Eckhart's turn. You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of I, Frankenstein. When I met you, I looked into your eyes and saw darkness. I'm a monster. You're only a monster if you behave like one. Frankenstein must be destroyed. the male equivalent of goth action stars Kate Beckinsale and Mila Jovovich? Not quite. In fact, he seems more in line with their love interests, Scott Speedman and Oded Fair. However, one thing all of these actors do have in common is that they are full-blown adults, in direct contrast to the teens that tend to populate gothic genre films these days. But honorable mention does go to Jeremy Renner and Hansel and Gretel Witch Hunters and Ethan Hawke and Daybreakers, who both really, really tried. But disappointingly, while Eckhart is 45, his contemporary Miranda Otto plays merely an ally, while his love interest is played by an actress almost 15 years his junior, Chuck Yvonne Strahovski. Hmm, the more Hollywood changes, the more it stays the same. But one interesting thing is that instead of Frankenstein's bride, the doctors, or the monsters, here Strahovski plays a modern-day scientist who discovers perhaps her work isn't as revolutionary as she'd imagined. Yes, in this mythology, Adam Frankenstein has been walking the earth since he was created in the early 1800s, only to find himself caught up in a war between demons and stone angels, aka gargoyles. The whole thing has been dreamed up by Kevin Grevieu, the independent comic book writer who also thought up Underworld. Grevieu is also an actor, he was the voice of Black Beetle on Young Justice, and here plays Dakar, just as he played Rays in the Underworld movies. But while Len Wiseman did a great job of bringing Underworld to the big screen and turning it into a multi-movie franchise, can Australia's Stuart Beatty, the Hollywood screenwriter behind 30 Days of Night and G.I. Joe The Rise of Cobra, do the same with his first big directing gig? So in my opening, I mentioned Daybreakers, the Ethan Hawke film that only managed to about break even at the box office, which is a shame because that was actually a very good movie. I remember reviewing it uh, when it came out. We actually did a BTT crew review, and that was a film that I went in with very low expectations and came out really impressed because it had great world building and really created its own mythology very quickly, efficiently, and believably. I wish I could say the same for I, Frankenstein. Uh, I mean, it really tries to borrow heavily from Underworld, which makes sense. It's, a, it's from the same creator. Uh, but while I think that the werewolves vampire uh, versus vampire war that that franchise created was very believable, uh, and the whole thing they were fighting over, uh, you know, a vampire werewolf hybrid, which would become the most powerful of them all, uh, that was very easy to kind of get into because it was very genre -y and very simple. I think that this idea of uh, repainting uh, Frankenstein's monster as an action hero is just too convoluted to pull off. And they don't pull it off here. I never believed that this really was Frankenstein's monster fighting a war between demons and stone angels. Uh, it looked cool, though. Uh, but for instance, you know, Frankenstein's face, he has the scars and everything, but he fit together really well. I mean, they never once gave me the impression that there was, you know, they say it's eight different people, but I guess they were all inside, uh, and they only had used one skin because, you know, he, he just came together, like it looked like they just, it looked like Dr. Frankenstein just pieced together a, a, an original body uh, and was somehow hacked up. Uh, and also, I didn't understand how he could become so uh, acclimated uh, to the modern world after being uh, exiled for 200 years. And there's a lot of technology to pick up on. And they have, of course, they have like the, you know, one of my favorite sketches from Robot Chicken is Montage Man. And of course, they have the montage training for Frankenstein, where he instantly becomes like this amazing fighter. Uh, and so they just asked you to buy an awful lot. Uh, and they, they did try, though. I mean, they worked in a lot of elements from the original Mary Shelley novel, uh, which, and that's what I have to say about the whole movie. It tried. The, in front of and behind the camera talent, really try hard. Uh, and I think that's what makes the movie watchable. Aaron Eckhart, while he doesn't look really like Frankenstein's monster, I think I like using an older actor. I felt it worked with the original story. Uh, I thought that he had a good look to him. He moved kind of like an animal, like a half animal, half man. Uh, he had a good look a lot of times in the shadows. He really used his face well, uh, his, his stitched up face. But I mean, I think Aaron Eckhart tried to sell it as best he could. Uh, I thought that Yvonne Strahovski, uh, I never watched Chuck, but I thought she was very likable here. I think she was believable also as a scientist, which is sometimes hard to pull off, especially when they cast these actresses. Like, uh, of course, the most infamous example is um, Denise Richards in the James Bond movie is Dr. Christmas, I think her name was. Uh, you know, so 
that was not that was an unfortunate casting situation. But here, Strahovski is very believable and sympathetic. Uh, so I liked that. I thought that was good. I thought that uh, Bill Nye always is very. Or uh, I think I I always convince. I'm always like, is that how you pronounce his name? It sounds like Bill Nye the Science Guy, but you know who he is. He's from Underworld. He was very good. Uh, the guy Kevin Gravio, uh, Gravio, who wrote the thing, he was good. But every time he spoke, though, I was like, oh, it's it's uh, Black Beetle from Young Justice. Hilarious. Uh, and then also the Gargoyles were very good. Miranda Otto, Jai Courtney. They tried to inject some diversity into the movie here by having a lot, you know, very uh, multicultural uh, gargoyles, which I think, you know, worked and was a nice effort. Uh, again, effort. Uh, and I thought the special effects were very cool. I really never got tired of seeing gargoyles transform from stone to flesh and blood, from their wings to their capes. That was really very well done. And so I have to actually give a shout out to Stuart Beatty. This is his first big uh, directing gig. He's, you know, I think directed just like a short or something before. He comes from the world of screenwriting. He wrote this screenplay. I don't know if he just didn't have enough to work with from uh, Kevin Grevieux or his work, you know, messed it up in the translation, but the screenplay is the weakest element here. But as a director, though, he's pretty good with an action sequence, particularly in the beginning uh, with some of the chase scenes. I mean, he really had everything come together very nicely. He really could get your adrenaline pump. Uh, so that was really cool. He did a nice job. I think he has a future, uh, you know, to some degree, as uh, like a good studio, reliable director that they can go to for these like middle of the road films. But you know, he the the, sap, the score was very good. That was used to a good effect. The special effects were well done. Uh, so I mean. I didn't have a great time watching it, but it wasn't as horrible as I thought it would be. And as I said, it is watchable. But the nicest thing I have to say about I, I Frankenstein, actually, though, is that the trailer in front of it for Robocop and IMAX looked pretty damn good. All right, so that's my review of I, Frankenstein. If you've seen the movie, please write your own thoughts down below what you thought of it. Uh, and I hope you'll check out these other episodes right now.